Hiya fam, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time. What's playing, Dan? So we have a sequel this week. Mm. The Naked Gun 2 and a half, The Smell of Fear. Excellent. I've been looking forward to this. I really enjoyed the first one. Let's go check it out. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. The President of the United States. <laughs> That's pretty spot on. It ain't bad. I get rid of the beer. Don't like that deal ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, no. Good to see you, Drevin. Poor lady. This week he is being honored for his 1,000th drug dealer killed. 1,000? <laughs> Yeah, in, in all honesty, the last two I backed over with my car. <laughs> Luckily, they turned out to be drug dealers. Luckily. <laughs> Dr. Albert S. Meinheimer. God damn. Full National Press Club oh, dinner no. this Tuesday. <laughs> He's best qualified to explain his research methods. <laughs> Dr. Meinheimer. Frank, stop eating. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're having a conversation here, for God's sake. Oh. You always drive into the best places. <laughs> Bikini contest? Yeah. Now where is he? I don't want to know. Oh, no. My God. <laughs> ah, this happens every fucking time when I go shopping. <laughs> it's Jane. Yeah. And a suspicious guy in the rain. You're thinking about him again, aren't you? You just can't forget about him, can you? Who? <laughs> <laughs> the president promised to implement whatever recommendations I make. Then you're going to deliver um, the speech that you told me about last week? Oh, yes, every word of it. <laughs> just take it. I found this in the wastebasket. That's a pretty nice clock. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, guys. This is four minutes too slow. Here, let me fix it. Oh, <laughs> no. There. Oh my God, you deserve that. To advise the DC Uncle. police as part of the president's Operation Scum Roundup. The heck? Come on, Frank. Worst driver ever. Somehow, some demented madman, probably full of self hate <laughs> and possibly a stick figure. What a scene of carnage. <laughs> Any other victims? Uh, you're standing on one right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. There she was, just like I remembered her. And breasts that seemed to say, hey, look at these. <laughs> she was the kind of woman that made you want to drop to your knees and thank God you were a man. Hmm. She reminded me of my mother already. Oh. <laughs> Why? Frank. Jane. How was your prostate operation? Good as new. Uh, in fact, they better than ever. Good. <laughs> uh, Frank, this is Dr. Albert Meinheimer. Don't get up. <laughs> we have a long road ahead of us. It's like having sex. It's a painstaking, arduous task. Just when you think things are going your way, nothing happens. <laughs> Wait, what? I gave the sketch artist a description. <laughs> <laughs> He's just drawing her. There are hundreds of experiments going on, all temperature controlled by the machinery just below us. Many of our... Uh-oh. God damn it, Frank. Oh. oh my God! My reaction. <laughs> Jane, darling. Quentin. Jane. Oh, Bob Goulet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Frank, this is Quentin Habsburg of Hexagon Oil Company. Frank Drebin, I believe I've used some of your restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Jane and I have been seeing quite a lot of each other lately. I've been dating too. Nice girl, an author. She wrote the book on male sexual dysfunction. You've probably read it. I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> Until tonight, then. Yeah, Frank, uh, if you're going to run over another uh, bad guy, there's one That's to go. That's the one, yeah. yeah. I get out of bed. <laughs> Hindenburg, really? Titanic. Titanic. <laughs> Old cigarette selling girls, okay. And pills. Good Lord. You know, sometimes I think about you and Edna. That's when I envy you, Ed. Well, I'm out running around with some 20-year-olds who just want to have a good time and cheap sex. Damn, Drevin, really? <laughs> I already have one. It's from the lady. Oh. 
Good evening, Sam. Mr. Drebin. Play it again, Sam. <laughs> Play our song. Ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> what? That's their song. Walk out of my life. No explanation. Didn't you get the letters I sent you? Tore them up, threw them in the fire. Then you didn't get the check for 75000 that your uncle left you in his will? <laughs> oh, no. Jesus Christ. But if I dusted you for Prince right now, there'd be a lover boy, Quentin Habsburgs. Oh, you... Mm. <laughs> well, um, where'd that come from? You never tried to understand. How can you say that? When I sank every penny I had into buying that 1,000 acres of Brazilian rainforest, then I had it slashed and burned so we could build <laughs> our dream. <laughs> I was hoping you'd be happy that you'd have someone. I, I love being single. I haven't had this much sex since I was a Boy Scout leader. <laughs> oh, wrong words. I mean, at the time, I was dating a lot. Yeah, make an exit now. Yeah. Gentlemen, gentlemen. <sighs> Who could have seen that coming? What about Meinheimer and his report? Why don't we just ask him? What's going what? Oh. It is my view, for now we must rely on coal, oil, and nuclear energy. What? They have a fake. Gentlemen, meet Earl Hacker. My fee is one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? That's what he looks like. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Vicious killer before he struck again. So far we had few clues and no real leads. Oh, well, that car's gone. Take it easy, man. Say your prayers. <laughs> Found this single dinosaur footprint. I'm booked on Geraldo next week. You're going on Geraldo because of this? No, my wife is a transsexual Satan worshiper. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shouldn't you be on Springer then? <laughs> Hector Savage from Detroit. He fought under the name of Kid Minneapolis. No, you're thinking of Kid New York. He fought out of Philly. Oh, God. <laughs> You sure know your boxing. Well, all I know is never bet on the white guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably good advice, actually. <laughs> De Carlo was in a part of town known as Little Italy. We proceeded Just there. Special B roll of Italy. <laughs> Jane said she saw a red van outside the Institute the night of the explosion. Let's bug the van, see where it goes. Lieutenant Frank Driven. Is this some kind of bus? Well, it's very impressive, yes. Well done, Trevor. <laughs> I'm the last line of defense between sleaze like this and the decent people in this town. Oh, hi, Frank. Say, we got that model D83 Swedish sure grip suck machine in the chord. <laughs> Going through a lot of work to bug that damn van. He's coming in oil. Uh -oh. Hey! He's stuck. God damn it, Nordberg. Nordberg's bugging device is right on the money. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. You should see him any minute now. Keep your eyes peeled. Step on it. Oh, God. Why? Oh, no. Oh. The chore. <laughs> Registered to one Quentin Capsburg. Mm. How you doing, Tripper? <laughs> what the heck? Why are these guys here? You just try and take me, driven. Frank, you can't drive that tank. <laughs> just keep him busy. You're gonna ram him down. I don't want a plane ticket to Jamaica. I don't want a nice hotel. Something really indicative of the people and their culture. <laughs> <laughs> She went right through the house. Oh, oh no. Trevin. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, there's a doggy in it. He better stay in the house. He's going into the zoo. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the woodbrook's still yeah. going. Oh, no. <laughs> you realize that because of you, this city is being overrun by baboons? Well, isn't that the fault of the voters? <laughs> <laughs> Frank, what are you 
doing here? Quentin Hefford, a man is as dirty as the coal miner's underwear in January. Well, I don't recall seeing your name on the guest list. I sometimes go by my maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> happen to be standing in my place. Oh, Dr. Meinheimer. You remember Frank. From police squad, you met him at the institute. Yes, you moron. I'm warning you, Habsburg, you so much as sneeze, and I'm gonna be there to wipe your nose. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Dr. Albert S. Meinheimer. Here, let me help you with that. Well, that really wouldn't be necessary. <laughs> Thank you, Drevin. It's nice of you. You're gonna wear all my gears down. I'm telling you. This <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it won't stop. <laughs> Jeff, are you doing God's work, man? <laughs> Muffy. <laughs> Scruffy. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there's nothing left. <laughs> Do you know what Dr. Meinheimer is going to say at the press club dinner tomorrow? Yes, he's going to endorse energy efficiency. What are you throwing sausage in your protein shake? Does he have any identifying marks, a scar, a web toes, a third nostril? <laughs> God, not a straight raw sausage. <laughs> he has a birthmark in the shape of Whistler's mother on his right buttock. What? Fix, stop it. Is there no end to your jealousy? Jane, you're hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She's taking everything. She had all that under. <laughs> Good lord. She's packing too. <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> Damn. Can it be that it was all so simple or Get him, Draven! Oh. oh no. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Come on. Still by the pig. <laughs> Uh oh. 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 Oh no. Oh, I was so frightened. <laughs> he was carrying this. Habsburg Valdez. Oh, Frank. I should have never doubted you. So put on some giant condoms and makeup. <laughs> Will you stay with me? There we go. No, <laughs> not ghosts. <laughs> they don't care anymore. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I didn't say you were in that good a shape. <laughs> good lord. <laughs> 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 I wonder what this could represent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Torpedo. Ah. When you hear me say, I love it, you guys move in. <laughs> the water's over there, Frank. He's still docked. Come on. <laughs> Here at Hexagon's Tanker Captain Training School. <laughs> Only the best will be allowed to take command of what is essentially a floating ecological time bomb. Ecological time bomb. Maybe dump with that in your materials. Oh, God's sake, don't swim. Frank. We know that nuclear energy is safe. We kind of think of it as our friendly neighbor. Uh, there's something wrong with that dog. <laughs> Genius. 
Frank, you better hold on. We may have a problem here. <laughs> Crash the party. <laughs> Lieutenant Drebin. Mm. They smell the sewage. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be me. I've been swimming in raw sewage. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's you the say signal. So. Let's go. Do it, do it. Great. Great. Oops. I love it. <laughs> You're just down in weird, Frank. He's wired. Good lord. <laughs> of course you know Dr. Meinheimer. And you've met Earl Hacker. Who are you, son of a... <laughs> That'll work. I hate you, Dreb. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Practically tarred and feathered here. <laughs> oh, no. oh, I think he should have died by now. He should have. You okay, Dr. Meinheimer? Uh, uh... <laughs> you could pin this all on him. <laughs> Garbage like you just makes me sick. Oh, no. Teach you to pick on a helpless invalid. <laughs> all right, he's had enough. Somebody <laughs> <laughs> So much for that. She's gonna unlock the doors at 7.30 sharp. What about Habsburg, Frank? We're just gonna have to hope that she can steer clear of him. I don't know, she can't resist him. Why, Jane, what are you doing out here? I was just getting a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Not right there, you ain't. <laughs> I grew up on Lake Erie. There's nothing quite like it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Jane. Bernardo, you got the keys? I have a better idea. No. No. No, Frank. <laughs> Recession, bad. Recovery, good. Very good, yes. <laughs> God's sake. Well, that actually kind of worked out. <laughs> I have this chair moving. Dr. Meinheimer. Or should I say, Hacker. Tremen! Ah! Oh, what he's doing to that man in the wheel? Ha! <laughs> Can someone help? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. On, Chicago Bears are there? No. <laughs> Eat up a guy in a wheelchair, huh? Oh. <laughs> Dependence on foreign oil has put a stranglehold on our national. A lot of cuts have to be made. <laughs> Some people are going to be hit hard. Oops. Wrong one. Cutting until we have an impact. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's standing up. Yeah. He can walk. He can walk. Hey. It's a miracle. <laughs> so can, yeah. Embrace oil and coal. He <laughs> 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 got his butt kicked. <laughs> Dr. Albert S. Meinheimer. No, 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 Frank, it's okay. <laughs> he didn't know that. He's a fraud! No. And I can prove it! Meinheimer has a birthmark in the shape of Whistler's mother, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, he's making it worse. <laughs> Not with steel wool. Oh, This is just torture, come on. But it's this man! God. And he's just given us this signed confession implicating that man! <laughs> Lord. Holy shit! <laughs> that man, Quentin Habsburg! Some shady people in this room. Wow, you guys got explaining to do when you get home. <laughs> Just a little bit. Tonight, I intend to share with you my report based on energy efficiency. Oh, yeah. no. You guys are screwed. Hey, cover! You had these guys up there, okay. Damn, Norberg? <laughs> Came prepared. Oh, for God's sake. Come on, guys. Come on. Cover me! I'm going in! Oh, my God. Norberg! <laughs> I don't know ah. where that came from, but okay. Where's Hotsburg? Uh, you're on my groin. Mm. <laughs> Talk, low life scum. Gee, 
If that's your attitude, forget it. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here, Drebin. I believe you are inquiring about Plan B. That's where we detonate a small nuclear device. No one's gonna be left alive. Damn, it's like the device from Goldfinger. Not so fast! Good job, Nordberg. Nice try. There we go. All right, now talk. Give me that yeah. abort code. Come on, Frank! One, seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky you. <laughs> that did work out. You better go. If you're going to be blown to bits, I want to be here with you. <laughs> to reset detonation code, first press pound sign. Per your command, the speed of this sequence. Oops. <laughs> the federal government only. That's yeah. accurate. <laughs> what? That's wild. <laughs> Read this. It's an emergency. Stroke. <laughs> As he thrust his purple-headed warrior into her quivering... <laughs> Not the purple-headed warrior. <laughs> no one's gonna be harmed by the huge bomb that's gonna explode any minute. <laughs> uh, Jesus, Nordberg. Nordberg. You and Drebin were made for each other. Get out of here! What? <laughs> had a power cord the whole time. That's all it took. I'd like you to consider filling a special post I'm going to create. May mean long hours and being surrounded by some of the scummiest elements in our society. You want me to be in your cabinet? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn down your offer, Mr. President. There you go, Frank. Blowing away a fleeing suspect with my 44 Magnum used to be everything to me. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. I want to be known as the environmental. Police, Police lieutenant. lieutenant. Okay, how do you do that exactly? I want a world where the Democrats will put somebody up there worth voting for. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, don't yeah. want that either. <laughs> I want a world where I can wake up each morning with this woman whom I love. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, will you marry me? Yes, of course I'll marry you. All right. Who had that made? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Damn it, lady. Frank. Why? Everybody just suffers around you. <laughs> What's the environmental version of Frank here look like? I have no idea. How do you, as a policeman, improve the environment? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, do you... well, well, I guess environment's a strong word here. You know, is are we talking? I know he was mentioning a lot about like the ozone layer or not, but yeah. I suppose you could metaphorically be me, be talking about like the environment that you work in, but too so maybe bust polluters and I don't know. Okay, well at least you're looking for an answer, I guess, because <laughs> he didn't give one there. He really didn't explain it very well, did he? No, uh... that was a that was a worthy sequel. That was fun. That was pretty good. I love how they took advantage of the, the Washington, D.C. environment to make a lot of political jabs. <laughs> yeah, they did. My God, they were hitting right at the Democrats in this one. Yeah, I wish they'd get somebody worth voting for, too. The Bushes were like, uh, no, we're happy that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty spot on for, but, the, uh, for the Bushes, so yeah. But even, even he got onto them, too. He's like, like you're going to be around some of the scummiest people in the world, so you're cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> they went at it, didn't they? <laughs> Boy, Nordberg can't stay alive for nothing. Would he alive at the end of this? He was, but still. He can't stay out of trouble, I should say. Yeah. Well, a lot of that's not his fault, but some of it is. As we can clearly see here. My God, you took a bus ride all the way underneath the bus, all the way to Detroit? <laughs> Jesus. I don't know how you end up in these situations, but there it is. So now I'm curious. Do you think it would be that easy, disarming a nuclear bomb? It's just tripping over the, the cord that it's plugged into? Or is there a lot more to it than that? Because you'd think there'd be a lot of protocols involved to keep to keep somebody from hacking into it i'm pretty sure you're not going to have a bomb plugged into an outlet like that ever <laughs> now would it always be that difficult i don't know i do remember an episode of a uh, sherlock where they actually disabled a bomb by just like hitting the off switch okay the other thing i don't know is like because they were in uh, los angeles in the first movie i think right here they're in washington 
But everybody moved to Washington like they've been there for years. It's the entire police squad. Yes. yes. <laughs> is that a is that normal for driving here? I don't think so. Okay. I, I guess it was just story convenience. Yeah, everybody was there. Ted was there. Nordberg, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, jeff has got some explaining to do because when they went to that uh that toy shop, uh, sounds like he was looking for something particular. Oh God. <laughs> You know, yeah, because he was uh, he was very direct about telling Frank that, wasn't he? Right. Hmm. Mm. I think you're onto something there. Oh, well, he did say he was a lonely man. I guess we know how he's handling it. <laughs> With whatever <laughs> <laughs> new version of that he, he can get get his hands on. What's he gonna do when Jane finds out about all those in his closet? Hmm. Maybe he hasn't bought it yet. He's had some. Right. He's had something. Were there any cameos or anything that I missed? There's the one guy when he was dancing with Jane. Um, the guy that he cut in for was a famous singer, and I can't think of the guy's name. Oh, the guy that she was dancing with, you mean? Yeah, because the, the guy, I think he was a Harry Stone's favorite singer, too, in Night Court. I can't for the life of me think what the guy's name is. I don't know. I never watched Night Court. Really? I've, I've heard about it, but I never watched it. Good show. Apparently, Will, that Weird Al was in this again. Must have missed that. Who was he? No, it's something, something back, back at the police station there. Might have been the guy that was holding up the police station. Oh, that could be. Yeah. He did kind of have wavy hair. Okay. <laughs> wavy hair, so. All right, so he's making cameos in all of them. Is he in the third one, then? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, even, uh, what is it, the mayor from the first one that was, like, talking about, like, sexual sexual assault with a concrete dildo and all that? I mean, the commissioner. She was in this, too. Yeah, she was. Everybody <laughs> transplanted <laughs> from L.A. <laughs> That's weird, right? Yes. What's that all about? <laughs> Just drag the whole troop to Washington here. Now I'm kind of curious. If Frank's killed a thousand drug dealers, how many other people has he killed who weren't drug dealers? Because you saw how he explained the last two. He's yeah. like, they just happen to be drug dealers <laughs> when I ran over him. We know he's a terrible driver. We saw him in the first one, too. Yeah. And there's plenty of evidence to keep backing that up. Mm -hmm. The world may never know. Man's probably killed a, at least a couple thousand. How many innocents, right? Okay. I don't know how he's still on the police force. The way he keeps messing up. Poor Dr. Meinheimer getting tortured up there on his birthmark. That was rough. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> Just like some uh, sandpaper on that in a, in a steel brush. <laughs> or what was that, steel wool? I guarantee nobody at the party was ready for that. Oh my god. That's no way to... Well, I mean, if he was playing Dursley, I'd understand. But still. It's an interesting birthmark, though. I've never seen one quite that vivid. Mmm. More like a tattoo, if anything. <laughs> kind of, which I'm sure it probably was for the sake of this film. Right. A really good movie there. I don't think it's quite as good as the first one, but it was still worthy. It was. The first one definitely had some moments that really made you think. This one was just funny, though, which is still good. It's fine by me. I mean, it's still Leslie Nielsen at his, at his best, mm -hmm. and he definitely makes the movie. So. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And I hear they're making another one, and they got Liam Neeson in mind for the role. Yeah, I've heard that, too. That might be kind of interesting. I don't... I like Liam Neeson. I don't know how that's going to play out. We'll find out. Yeah. Soon enough. If it's any good, we'll watch it here, fam. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, when it comes out, make sure you let us know if it's any good, so we'll watch it. Yeah, please do. Because, I mean, it's been a while since a comedy has come through. Mm -hmm. Like a de like just a standalone comedy has come into theaters, so... Mm -hmm. It'll be good to see if they actually do a good job. Especially these kind of spoof films, too. You don't see as much of that anymore like you used to. Why is that? Like... These are the perfect things, like this and an airplane and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Great films. Why not do them anymore? Did they just kind of like die off? I don't know. People lost their sense of humor, I guess. Huh? I mean, they really did. They really did, because it's like plenty of horrors, plenty of dramas. Never any comedies come out these days. At least not like this. No. Yeah. No, they'd have to come out in like in like a series format or something. Mm -hmm. I want like a theater comedy. It's been a while. Yeah. You gotta have variety in the theaters, friends. <laughs> I need more stuff like this. Please. But fam, on that note, I think we're just gonna go ahead and call it quits there. Uh, by all means, fill in any gaps that we might have missed there. Movies like this, there's always something that you're gonna miss. So, help us out if we need help, guys. But as always, if you're brand new to the channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications for all future videos. 
And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, guys, some of our videos do tend to get demonetized from time to time. You can help us out a lot, guys, if you if you feel so compelled by uh, becoming a member and just joining up, guys. We would greatly appreciate it, but it's not required. But as always, uh, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there, guys. But this is Cocktail Flicks, and I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Later, guys.